Hi good people, my name is Titus and today we're going to be covering Unreal Engine's enhanced input system, which includes four main concepts, actions, mappings, triggers, and modifiers. And to demonstrate this, we have an Xbox controller and a basic scene set up with mostly a basic blank player character. You'll notice I am attempting to move around or push buttons and my player is not moving or doing anything. So let's try to fix this. Uh, we can come to our input folder, right click and create our first input action. You can think of an input action as anything you want your player character to be able to do. So this can include crouching, jumping, attacking, firing, looking, and moving around. I think for this prototype, we'll create four actions. Uh, we'll create a look action. We'll create a move action. We'll create a jump action. And last but not least, we'll create a sprint action. Now we can open each of these up so we can define their values. And starting with jump, uh, we have value types of digital boolean, axis 1D, 2D, and 3D. Um, digital booleans are basically on off switches. These are typically used for your button presses. Um, but for controls like gamepad thumbstick values, you can use a 2D action uh, or axis to hold the X and Y value of the thumbstick. Uh, if you wanted to use the axis 3D, that would be for things that hold complex data. So think of things like motion controllers um, or like any VR stuff it would probably be using that. Uh, but for this example, for the jump, a digital boolean is going to work just fine. Now you'll notice we have triggers and modifiers. Um, an input trigger basically represents the current state of an action, uh, which you can also add additional requirements to before the trigger is considered successful, uh, which thus initiates the action. Uh, so in this example for the jump, I could, for example, do a press trigger and then a release trigger. And then in the code, I can define the action to be successful as when the player just pushes the button or if they have to push and then release for the action to actually take effect. Um, for the modifiers, uh, input modifiers are basically preprocessors that alter the raw input data before it's consumed by the input trigger. Uh, most commonly, you'll see this used for sensitivity settings like your look and your aim speed. Um, but I'm not gonna be using that in this example. And the press and release is fine to leave. It will not hurt anything for this prototype. Um, so for the jump, we have our digital boolean that looks good. Our look is going to be using an axis 2D. Our move is also going to be using an axis 2D. And our sprint is going to be a digital boolean. So we can save each of these actions. And then we are good to go there. Coming back to our input folder, let's go to input and create a new input mapping context. I'll call it my controller. So you can think of an input mapping as basically a collection of actions. But what's really interesting is that they can be dynamically assigned at runtime. So what does that mean? Uh, it means you could create, theoretically, um, imagine a prototype where you have a player character that moves around in a world and they have a default mapping scheme, um, such as they have the ability to run, crouch, jump, go prone, move around, look around, what have you. But then they come across a vehicle and they get in the vehicle and then they have all sorts of different actions related to the vehicle, like honking the horn, braking, accelerating, what have you. You could create um, two different input maps. You create a default map where the player moves around and you create a vehicle input map. And then when the player enters the vehicle, you would dynamically assign the mapping context to be that vehicle map. That way, all the other buttons related to the general movement would not be seen, and then it would just be the vehicle options, unless the player gets out and then it switches back. So that's kind of where the system becomes very versatile. Uh, so let's add the mappings we created. So we had our jump, we had our look, our move, and our sprint. All right, so for our jump, I can hit the uh, listen key and I'm just gonna push the A button on my Xbox controller and then I'll automatically put that in for me. Uh, and then for my look around, uh, let's see. 
we can probably make this the right thumbstick. So I'll go to my gamepad. I'll do the right thumbstick 2D axis. And then for the move, I'm gonna set that to be my left thumbstick, uh, left thumbstick 2D axis. And then for the sprint, I'm gonna push the listen button and use my left trigger. And this is going to complete my basic setup. If you're using keyboard WASD to move around, you would have to get clever with some of the assignments, uh, maybe adding a modifier, uh, such as the negate modifier. Uh, basically do add a negative value so your character knows to go down and up or left and right. Uh, I don't have to do that with a gamepad because the uh, it's a 2D axis, so it has a, uh, a negative and a positive value, so it does it for me. Um, but all right, so we have our actions set up. We have our map set up, but you'll notice I still can't move around, right? That makes sense because we haven't defined anything in the code to use it. Um, so coming back over here, uh, what we'll want to do is on the begin play, we want to assign that input mapping context. Uh, we can do this by casting to the player controller. And then the object pin we can pull off into the get controller function. And then on the blue pin, as the controller, we can reference the enhanced input local player subsystem. And then on the successful cast, we'll want to check that we got a valid response. These are the one with the question mark. And then we can pull the pin in here so we don't get some null data there. And then we can simply pull off the blue pin into a add mapping context. And then we could simply assign the controller scheme we used, which was IMC my controller in this instance. And this is also how you would dynamically switch between controller schemes. Another example would be like a, if you're making an asymmetrical prototype and you have a third person character team and you have a first person character team, they might have different controls. So this would be another use of that case. Um, but now that we have the mapping context set up, we have access to the actions now. So I can do the um, jump, look, move, and sprint actions. Uh, the first one we'll do, let's do look. Uh, our action value is a 2D uh, X and Y. We can right click and split that. So we have their individual components. And then you can pull into an add controller and I will do a yaw input. And then I can do add controller pitch. And then I can pass the X value into the yaw and the Y value into the pitch. And that works just fine for a basic look around code. Now the next action we'll use is the move. Same thing, we can split that structure pin so we have the X and Y. Then we can come into and add movement input. And then we can Control D to duplicate that because we're going to be doing separate assignments here. So our scalar on the first input will be the X and then on the second one will be the Y. And then I can move this down here to make it a little bit more readable. The way I'm going to handle the movement is I'm simply going to get the control rotation and then I'll come into a get right vector. And then on the next one, I will use the same control rotation, but this time I'm going to come into a get forward vector. And then I can just simply split my structure pins. All right, so we got our structure pin split here. And the first one, I'm just gonna pass the X and the Z value in, and then pass that return value into the world direction. And the second one, I'm just gonna pass in the Z value and return that in the world direction. And that'll handle my movement code. Then we can do the jump. Jump's a little bit easier because we're using the character movement script. So I can simply reference the jump function. And then the stop jumping function. And then under started, I can trigger the jump. Under completed, I can trigger the stop jumping. And that pretty much sets up the, uh, the jump logic. 
And then last but not least, we can use the Sprint. For the Sprint, we created a simple Niagara system. So I can drag that out and then I can set it active here and then disable it here. So under started, we turn the effect on. Under completed, we turn the effect off. And then I can just reference my character movement and I can pull into a set max walk speed. Default max walk speed is 600. So I can maybe double that to 1200 and then set it back to 600 when we're released. And then I will also want to uh, set max acceleration just to make the effect happen very quickly. I'm going to match the max speed here. This pin here and this pin here. Okay, so now we have our actions created. We have our input map set up, and then we've now defined how to use those in the blueprints code. So now if we play this, you'll notice I can grab my controller. I can move around. I can jump. And then I can also dash. And that's how you can easily implement any controller scheme using the enhanced input action system. Hope you enjoyed.